What's up, everybody? Back to body language analysis, part two of the disastrous jubilee appearance that Will and Kate have. Now, a lot of you guys actually messaged me, thank you, Red Label, on Instagram to say that Will and Kate have always had marital problems and they've always kind of led separate lives. What I'm saying by this analysis is this is critical. It has never been more proof that forget about them being on separate pages. It looks like Will has completely broken Kate. It literally does look like this. Now there is bad and then there's worse. I know people think the divorce is doubtful, but it does look like Kate is moving into Diana realm, not in terms of relevance or impact or goodwill or wanting to help others or social change or even fashion sense. No, 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 no. Kate is moving in to Diana territory in the way that Charles thought that they left a shell of a woman. They are literally, they looks like they have succeeded in making Kate who they tried to make Diana be between the men in gray and of course, between a loveless marriage. And just like Diana, there is some similarity. Kate is desperate to appease William, to make him love, excuse me, to make him love her. But it looks like William wants no parts. He wants Kate gone. Let's look at this shocking video a little closer and let's get into it okay now just as a litmus test because you need a litmus test to let you know where things stand in a relationship where at least people seem to like each other seem to live in the same house and seem to have a mutual respect admiration and dare i say devotion to them now it would be two spot one to bring in Harry and Meghan. Will and Kate have been married for over 10 years. Harry and Meghan have only been married for three, four years. Again, there's more love now, in my opinion, than there was. But let's look at Prince Charles and Camilla because they have been around for the long haul. Now, if you go in, right? Sorry, guys, let's just... Now, if you look at, and they're walking down the stairs, they're walking... Oops, what am I doing? If you look at Charles and Camilla as they walk down the stairs, they are on the same path, right? They are perfectly in sync. It's not something that's perfectly in sync because it's something they practice. They are just perfectly in sync because that comes, if you look at this, look, they're marching almost perfectly in sync. Charles is leaning into her, his hands are open and Camilla is open and relaxed. Let's look at Will and Kate by comparison, right? Kate tries to say something to Will. Now, as you know, as she comes down, she has a frozen smile, right? When it comes to frozen styles, they are, it's an appeasement gesture done to show other people that you're not a threat and that you mean no harm, even though you aren't experiencing any real joy or happiness, right? Now, as we go into that, William has that purse tight smile we talked about pulling into the sides of his list that shows that he is trying his best to quiet himself from inner disgust or disdain of the person that he feels around, right? Kate tries to make small talk. William literally returns the small part, small talk with a furrowed forehead, a definite sign of negative thoughts. It is a sign of negative thoughts. It's show you're showing your disapproval of the person in, uh, uh, in front of you. And you're hoping to cause a change in their behavior for whatever reason, between the furrow, uh, the mouth pulled tight, William showing disgust and the furrow brow. It's showing that he is disgusted by Kate, but he looks at his disgust as Kate's fault. He is showing he wants her to change her behavior to better please him. He wants her to be, uh, people use this on children when they want a more submissive audience, right? It's an honest portrayal of disapproval through a furrowed forehead that works to influence others, right? It works to influence others to change their behavior. Now, this is the sick part about it because at the end of the day, when someone feels disgust towards you, especially when it comes to affairs of the heart. You cannot take accountability for that. Kate cannot make you change your feelings for her. Your feelings for her, by the way, the furrow, whenever William makes 
Kate's eye contact, right? It's a feral brow. It's obvious indicators of disgust. And he wants her to know that she is disgusted by him. She wants her to know. Now, you guys pay attention to this because something really sad and tragic happens right here. Kate, you see multiple blink blinkings. Subconsciously, even if she doesn't realize it, subconsciously, her fight or flight reflex, her evolutionary response got William's body language 100%. The furrow brow, you displease me. You need to change. The pinched lips, I find you disgusting. Kate hears that in her gut 100%. And she resorts to blinking. Let's just play that back. The blinks. Look at the blinks. How much Kate blinks when William sends those subconscious cues Kate is caught off guard. Even her fake smile starts to wean. She is aghast at the level of disgust that he has. Again, I've said this a million times. Yes, they've had problems, but it's reached an all new toxic level. An all new toxic level. Let's move on. Kate looks around in confusion. She doesn't know. She knows that what she feels in her gut, but she's in a public setting. Again, this is all very new to Kate too. Not that William feels dislike or contempt, but the level is new. It is reaching max capacity. The level is new. It is making max capacity. Now one can argue that there was like, they found company and solace in each other by making Harry and Meghan a common enemy but once the common enemy has left or once the common enemy is no longer a threat or at least a threat you can battle together that is where each other's true feelings to each other will come out let's continue this because this is actually really shocking what's about to happen kate moving around squirming again the look of just pure disgust furrowed brow and what's more looking past her no eye contact looking past her almost as if he lays eyes on her he won't be able to contain himself kate now does this amazing thing she licks her lips she bites her lips right she licks her lips she bites her lips now listen biting lips it's if it's done chronologically it signals persistent underlying negative feelings right it's also an effort to calm and pacify through energy displacement and offering the person that is feeling these intense stressful negative feelings right it's offering them a chance to control their bodies it's offering control over your pain literally um Kate is trying to pacify herself. That wave of pain she felt that caused her to flutter, the shock that she felt at the level of contempt that William now has at her, a level that she has not faced before. It literally gives her body waves of pain when she bites the lip. It also shows that Kate, of course, suffers from hidden insecurity, anxiety, embarrassment, vulnerability, and sadly, the lack of self-confidence, but that wave of pain when it washed over her was a bit too much. Now look at this, what's about to happen. Do you see that right there? Do you see that? Do you see that? Let's just rewind this a second. William, she thinks for a second that William's looking at her and catching her, touching her neck. And she almost jumps. She almost jumps in fear. I know everybody says that Kate will never leave, but I do think now Kate is fearful that she is going, that she is on such thin ice. And even though we don't see the possibility, Kate sees the possibility of William doing a charge, a Charles and getting rid of her. Look at this jump. Look, jump, touching the neck. What does that mean? We saw from the Jubilee that when Kate turned and looked at Harry, Kate does a lot of things that she tries to gain control of her body, but for whatever reason, her mind, her heart, her body, it betrays her a lot. You guys, a neck hold, a scratch, a rub is a response to negative feelings and is a restraint process. Holding oneself back as one might do to a, a, a cat or a dog that's acting aggressively back then in the old times. They grab them by the scruff of the neck, right? Only in this case, you're doing it to yourself. Grabbing the back of your neck shows that a person doesn't like what is being proposed. So they feel it's necessary to bottle up. They feel it's necessary to bottle up what is being proposed. 
They feel it's necessary to bottle up their thoughts so as to avoid confrontation and aggression. You guys, look at this. This lets you know everything you need to know about how bad things are between Will and Kate right now. It is, re look at this. She touches her neck. She needs to bottle herself up. That way the pain was too much, biting her neck. Her lip did not nullify her. Look at this, the jump. That moment of fear that Will notices, right? She rushes to move, remove her hand, but her hand is also pacifying her. So she gets that one last stroke and then she does her best. This is a face of a woman that literally knows that she is on thin ice. And this is the face of a woman. And even if it's a prison of her own making, she is in a prison of the heart. She is in the winner of her discontent. And the person she wants most to put her out of her misery is the person that's putting her in. You guys, this gets deep. The more and more and more I look at William and Kate and their body language, the sicker and sicker and darker it gets. I see why. I, I don't know. You guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you think it's a reach. And let me know if you want more body analysis videos. All right, my little tattletales, I will talk to you later. Bye.